All right, welcome folks. I wanted to talk about how in a group, the inverse of any element is unique. So we just talked about this proposition, how the identity element in a group is unique. In a group, there's only one identity. Okay? Inverses, think of inverses as matchings between different elements in a group. So we need to phrase this proposition differently. Okay, so in any group G, um, the inverse, and now it's not, it's not just the inverse of, of the group. We have to say the inverse of an element, A in that group is unique. Maybe we call it G. G. Okay. So you'll notice that there's a new symbol that appeared. The identity in the group is unique, but but now we're not talking about uh, now we're talking about the inverse of any particular arbitrary element, little g. All right. So you know, in the group of integers under addition, there's only one additive inverse for three. It's negative three. There's no negative three and negative three prime, right? Or in the non-zero real numbers under multiplication, there's only one inverse for five. It's one fifth, you know, there's, there's only one possible inverse. Okay, let's prove this. And, and first, let me recall what the definition of an inverse is. So recall, um, the definition of an inverse of some element G in a group is an element G inverse with G times G inverse equaling the identity and vice versa. So no matter how you combine G with its inverse, you get the identity, which we've denoted E. So what we're gonna do for this proof is we're gonna assume we had two different inverses for G, and then we're gonna prove that they're equal to each other. So let G inverse and maybe G tilde inverse be uh, two different inverses. Let me remove the word different. Let me just say, let them be two inverses for G. Okay. Our hope is to prove that G inverse equals a bunch of stuff that we massage until we get G tilde inverse, okay? So we're trying to prove that those two alleged, uh, th those two inverses are, just, are equal. So, so then we can conclude Since G inverse is equal to G tilde inverse, um, this means inverses are unique. A priori, we could have had a hundred different inverses for G, okay? But any two of them we've now shown are equal to each other. Therefore, the inverse must be unique. There can only be B1. All right, let's do this. One way to write G inverse is just G inverse times the identity E, right? Because um, multiplying by the identity doesn't change anybody. Multiplying G inverse by the identity doesn't change the inverse. Okay. One way to write the identity is as G times one of its inverses, okay? I'm going to use the inverse G tilde inverse. Okay, so that's, that's you know, I'm, I'm looking at this one of my two inverses for G, which I've called the G tilde inverse. Maybe that's not the best notation, but let's keep running with it. Okay, so this first equality was by the definition of the identity. This next equality is um, uh, since uh, 
um, I'll just say definition of inverse. Right, detailed inverse is one of the inverses for G. So their product is the identity. Now I'm gonna use associativity. Associativity allows me to group the parentheses on the first two terms instead of the last two terms. So this is associativity. Okay, what's G inverse times G? That's just the identity. So that is definition of inverse. Right? G inverse times G is the identity. And what's the identity? Whoops. Okay. Sorry, it should be the identity times G tilde inverse. And then what's G tilde in, what's the identity times G tilde inverse? It's just G tilde inverse. This is by definition. Um, All right, so you'll see I have this long chain of equalities using various properties of my group that allowed me to go from G inverse to G tilde inverse to see that they're the same. I sort of confusingly added an identity in here and wrote the identity as something times its inverse and then applied associativity and then apply the something times kind of an inverse is the identity and then flaps the identity away. You know, going this direction was really no different than going the other direction. But in any case, I see that my two inverses, G inverse and G tilde inverse, have to be equal. So inverses are unique. Public questions. Thanks so much.